Since 2001, two and a half million American servicemen and women have deployed to the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Injuries to the body and the brain are one legacy of these conflicts, as are mental and emotional wounds that are harder to see or understand. We're joined by the authors of Shooting Ghosts, a memoir of combat and its aftermath by retired Marine Thomas Brennan and photojournalist Finbar O'Reilly. Welcome to both of you. Thomas, I want to start with you. So you're a Marine. You fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. What did you think on the day that this photojournalist Finbar arrived to embed with your squadron? Uh, I, I was not happy. I, I, I was very nervous that, that he was going to get in the way. Um, the military is a very attention to detail driven organization uh, and the nuances of knowing whether you should call a service member a Marine or a sailor or, or a soldier are, are things that mean a lot to those of us who wear the uniform. And it's not something that a lot of journalists know, um, uh, but that there might be a difference. Right. And Finbar, what was the experience like for you embedding? This is my first time embedding with the Marines, but I'd been on embeds with the Canadian Army and with the U.S. Army previously. And I knew that you always have to spend a bit of time trying to earn the trust of the, the guys who you're meeting in the field. And then you have to kind of prove yourself uh, out on patrols and, and walk with these guys. And then, Finbar, you wrote that the two of your lives were welded together. What does that mean and how did that happen? Well, I'd been with uh, TJ squad for um, a week or two. Uh, we'd been in a couple of firefights, uh, but on one occasion we went out and um, there was a Taliban ambush and TJ ended up getting knocked out by an RPG explosion. And I reported on it as a photographer and ended up writing some a follow-up article about it for the New York Times. And um, I kind of thought that might be the end of the story, but a lot more transpired afterwards that, that meshed our lives together. Uh, TJ ended up writing a piece for the New York Times almost a year later, actually. Um, and it was about him writing about what it was like to be on the other side of my lens. And that sort of rekindled a conversation that I'd been having on an occasional basis with him, with him online about writing, about the after effects of war, how he had been affected. And I talked with him about how I had been affected as a photojournalist covering conflict as well. Coming back, uh, I had a lot of my memories from Iraq and Afghanistan wiped away during that explosion. So part of what was able to help me heal and help me understand what happened to me were Finbar's photos and the story that he wrote for the New York Times. And then I have hundreds of letters that my wife and I exchanged throughout the deployment. So really just being able to go through and, and look at the source material, his photos, our letters, and, and piece together uh, my experiences kind of helped me heal and come home. Tell me about that process of healing. I mean, what was the what was the most important part or turning point in, in that process? Um, I think what a lot of people don't realize when people come home from war is the toll that it takes on a military family, that it's not just the serviceman or servicewoman that comes home and, and is having trouble. I mean, my wife, um, when I came home from war, I came home a different person. Um, and you know, her seeing me wounded firsthand, you know, with pictures right after they were taken, I'm sure that took a, a mental toll on her. And then when you look at the secondary and tertiary effects of war, my daughter is going to feel the impact of my wars for the rest of her life. From the mental health standpoint and then from the traumatic brain injury standpoint, it's, it's incredibly stressful trying to come home and, and re-identify who you are and what your purpose is and, and what you're going to do in your post-military career. Finbar, you also write from your perspective about the trauma of having photographed, about taking pictures of people in their vulnerable moments. Describe what it was like for you coming back and the way that, that you felt. Well, I covered a lot of conflicts over many years across Africa and the Middle East. And I think after a certain amount of time, I started to feel like the images that I had hoped would make a difference or have some kind of impact, I didn't feel like they were having the kind of effect that I would have hoped as a journalist. And that left me feeling quite disillusioned. And also the intensity of the experience of being in some of these places and the kind of emotional disconnect you have to kind of impose in order to work in some of these hostile environments meant that you have to be very empathetic to the stories that you're covering, but at the same time you have to dull your emotions a little bit in order to not feel overwhelmed. The impact that I found is that when I came back, I, I still had that numbness within me in terms of relating to other people, people who I cared about. I felt just kind of dead emotionally. Thomas, you write, I'm accepting that a part of me will always be at war, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Tell me what that means. One of the most difficult things for me to accept was the hypervigilance that I had when I came home, always wanting to know what was going on around me, paying attention to, uh, to, to 
and just paying attention to things that happen in the world around you. And um, I think a lot of coming home is learning to reframe your experiences um, and, and you know, accepting that you can't change what's happened in the past. You just need to accept what you've done. Well, Finbar, you wrote, it feels good to support someone else who is struggling. One of the best ways to help a depressed person is not to do something for him, but rather to ask him to do something for you. Give him a task, make him feel useful, make him realize he is useful. Is the book in part a little bit about that? Absolutely, for both of us, we had to find uh, a sense of purpose, and, and the book is our sense of purpose. After war, we had to each find new identities. TJ as a civilian when he came back and left the Marine Corps, me as somebody who stopped taking conflict photographs and had to work out what my identity was going to be afterwards. So th the book is really about our process, and it is about war, but the book is about friendship and about finding meaning and purpose after war. And really, it's, it's something that we wanted to share with people because trauma is a very isolating kind of thing. And the, the inclination is to turn inward and away from people at the very time when you actually need their support to move through this. And for TJ and I, writing the book, writing it together, was something that allowed us to have that shared experience. And the idea of the book is to really to share that, our personal experiences with others so that they may not feel so alone in those times where, where we felt very alone ourselves. Thank you both for the book and for being here to talk to us about it. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you.